It's really cool. Um, the village is great. It feels quite compact and cosy. Um, so we've done a bit of exploring, been here for a few days and um, yeah, it's starting to feel like a second home now. I think of course there's expectation, um, you know, just born off the back of our previous successes, which I was lucky enough to be a part of. So I kind of see that as a, as a source of confidence because I've, you know, I've, I've been in that position where I've been under tremendous pressure to deliver four good runs and, and I've managed to do that. So, you know, I, I look at that as, as a source of confidence rather than pressure, if anything. I think so. In, in a sense, we've been very lucky because although obviously it's been um, a couple of years very much affected by COVID, our international federation um, has done a very good job to ensure that we've had two pretty much full race seasons. Um, so although we've not been able to travel as far and wide as we would normally, we've been restricted to uh, stay in Europe. We have been able to compete on a, a full calendar. So, you know, in one sense, that's been amazing. It's been great because I know that other sports aren't as fortunate. I think the downside is um, we probably haven't had the variety of tracks that we would have liked to have been on. Um, and just in general, our ice time, you know, already as a nation, we we have a lot less ice time than other uh, nations obviously because we don't have our own track so we are reliant on traveling um, and having access to those other places so outside of competition our um, our access to ice has been a bit restricted and I think um, you know more is always better so so more would have been great but you know we are where we are now um, we, we're here we're in the Olympic Village and I feel like you know at this point almost everything that's gone before is you know we, it's irrelevant now there's a line drawn in the sand and it's all about the next 10 days. So in the summer, we're based at the University of Bath. Uh, we have our push track there, uh, which is the only place in the UK that you can practice pushing a skeleton sled. But obviously the push is only five seconds of the overall performance and the rest of it happens, um, you know, you're driving down a nice track. So, um, you know, we do our best to get out to as many different tracks as possible and get as many runs outside of competition as we can. Um, but I think, you know, it's fair to say that we're always at a disadvantage where, you know, wherever we go, it's someone else's home track, it's someone else's backyard. Um, but I think that stands us in really great stead for the Olympic Games because, you know, we're used to coming in with less runs than other people um, and having to figure a track out and just go for it. And I think it's no different here. Yeah, so we've managed to have um, a couple of track walks um, and we've also had one day of training. So um, it's been really great to get back on the ice. We've had... Uh, because of travel and logistics and so on, we've had a few weeks off the ice, which isn't ideal when you're talking about, you know, being really fine tuned on your on your sled. Um, having time off it isn't great, but um, it was really nice to have a day of training yesterday to get back on the sled and just to get back in tune with you with our equipment and then also with the track as well. And obviously to see what's the same as the test event in October and what might have changed. It's really interesting because you you expect everyone to peak but you don't really know what that's going to look like until race day um and it's different for everyone so I, I think the biggest unknown quantity is probably the Chinese athletes because they um they've been basically training in China they, they haven't done many world cups in the last couple of years um which means that they have a huge bank of knowledge on this track they've probably done upwards of 500 runs each I'd have thought on this track by now um compared to our 30 um hmm. But, you know, that does put the pressure back on them. You know, it's theirs to lose because of that. So, um, and as I said, I think we're, you know, what, the very nature of the fact that we don't have our own track means that we're, we're very used to going somewhere and, and figuring it out quickly. I think part of it is putting on the Team GB kit. You know, it does feel different. Um, as great as it is to be on the World Cup circuit week in, week out, it, it does feel different to come to an Olympic Games, be wearing the Team GB kit. It's very special and it does, it, it feels like you're able to find a new level because you're it just there's just something very magical about it and, and you feel like you sort of find that extra gear um and I think you know in my mind the World Cups have happened now and you know I'm drawing a line under that because you can't go back and change anything and I'm seeing this as a blank slate I think you know four heats over two days anything can happen um we know it's a sport it's incredibly difficult to be consistent we're working with hundreds of a second um so you know in my mind anything can happen and you know you know why shouldn't I be aiming high